friends, um, in today's video I want to talk about tips and tricks that will help you get A's in your anatomy class and microbiology class. Um, I have, I feel like a pretty good way of studying and I've gotten really, really good grades. Both of my classes, I happened to take anatomy and um, chem, or uh, I think it was like anatomy and organic chem together and then I took um, AMP2 and microbiology together. So I really had to um, really think of a strategy and good habits of, I have my desk, um, right? And then I have, and right above it, I have pictures and diagrams of really important things that I could look back on. So for example, if in anatomy we're studying about the veins, I like to take pictures of, um, I like to print pictures of like, you know, the whole body labeled and I like to put it on my wall because it is something easy to refer back to. Um, or for example, if there are multiple chapters of the heart, I like to put um, the blood flow of the heart onto my wall and then I could just, you know, if they uh, start talking about the aorta or um, the pulmonary veins and like they go, if they go into depth with it, I just like refer back to the diagram and just constantly looking back onto um, the pictures that I have on my wall really helps me memorize everything. Um, when it comes to microbiology, I do the same thing. I'm speaking about prokaryote, prokaryotes and eukaryotes, I could um, within the chapter and I, and I need to look into, uh, I, need, I need like a picture, I could just look on my wall and have a nice diagram of that cell. Um, I also like to take important notes and just like kind of put little um, sticky notes on those pictures and it just really helps me memorize everything. Um, okay, so the first step is um, to have a calendar and a planner. Uh, as you can see, I have a nice little calendar I got at Walmart for like $10 and I would um, highlight, you know, my class and then put, like the second you get your syllabus, just write everything down on that calendar. It's extremely important if you're taking multiple um, stressful classes and it's extremely important to keep organized. You do not want to miss a due date. Um, you want to get the best score possible. So I would really, really recommend getting a calendar and a planner. Um, you don't have to go crazy with the planners or calendars. I mean, I didn't, I just got what was affordable. So I got a monthly calendar and it helped me a lot. And I also got like this little planner um, from Walmart and it was like, I think like $4 or something. And it um, does its job. I mean, you know, for me personally to have a calendar and I like to put everything out on that calendar. Um, so I know what's coming, but like if I'm in class and the professor like is like, oh yeah, we have a quiz in two days. I'm like, what? You know, I've noticed that a lot of professors tend to do, tend to do that. So I just like take out my planner and I just like quickly write it down. Um, and that's what I had to do over here. I mean, like, like I said, this planner, I mean, for me, um, I don't like like little small planners. I like big calendars. So for a little planner, um, I don't color code it. I just kind of like, you could tell, like I wrote really, really fast on these planners. It was just kind of like, you know, just, just a reminder as like, oh, I have to do this um, after I hear my teacher's lecture. Also, I am a very creative person. Um, so I ha I cannot, although that planner is, you know, just like quickly written and everything, I don't like to study with just one black, like colored pen. Like I like to keep everything very creative. I like to, um, you know, color code everything and just make it very organized for my eyes. Like I, if it's like for titles, I'll put like blue and then for information, I'll put like orange and then for that, within that information, I'll put like something else. I just really like to keep everything organized. Um, I do like highlighters also. I don't like like dark colored highlighters. Like I like like just plain, I, I just like to stick with yellow because like I feel like when you have like dark blue highlighters, they like, they you can't read the ink. Um, when you do use the blue highlight highlighter, so I don't use that. Also, um, 
with highlighters they tend to um, they tend to smudge through so if like you have to constantly write everything I actually use colored pencils um, and with the colored pencils I could just like lightly just like go over it and it actually looks pretty nice um, for me that's what I like to do um, also I do not like to use um, college notebook paper I feel like it's very thin and I feel like it's very small I prefer printer paper um, because it's just much larger and I feel like I could make it much neater um, and it's not as thin as a piece of paper I just I for some reason like with a piece of paper I'll write something and then like when I make a mistake I like I'm like oh shit and then I you know scribble it out and then I end up like breaking the piece of paper I guess I'm too rough I have no idea I just do not I don't like using notebook paper unless I have to um also um please get a printer if you're creative like me now get a decent printer that is used for like a lot of printing i made the mistake of getting like this small affordable printer and i was like oh it's 50 dollars and um you know it's you know it's i could scan it fax it fax papers i could print you know it does its job for 50 dollars. i was like let me get it i got it and I was constantly printing everything and the ink is like $60 because I need both, like the black and the color um, inks. So it was like $60. So I was constantly printing stuff and it was constantly like just $60. And uh, because I'm taking stressful classes, like diagrams helped me a lot. So I kept having to constantly print everything. So um, I would, if you need to print stuff, I would save up some money and get like a nice decent sized printer, ones that are used for like businesses or something because those are, the inks are, I, I think they're either more affordable or it's more like the whole, um, the way that printer is, is more affordable based off this little printer that constantly needs ink. Um, okay, now getting into the books. So for anatomy and microbiology, what I like to, um, first is I like to look at the end of the chapters I like to see what the bullet points are um, and see what is you know most important within those chapters um, and then I like to and then I like to look at the syllabus because each professor requires something completely different you know you may not need to know everything so when I grab the end of the chapter and then I um, look at what the professor requires for you to know then I go into depth within the information. Now with anatomy, um, and it's not as bad in microbiology, but with anatomy, there's so much information and you do not need to know everything. Um, my professor always, you know, made it kind of clear of what you did need to know and what you didn't need to know. So I wouldn't like overstudy. Um, I would do what's required and if you do have a question, I would, like, I would constantly, you know, ask the professor, hey, um, you know, and I would like summarize everything for him and be like, you know, is this like, do I have everything clear with him? I would just go over um, everything with my professor. And with microbiology, it's not as much as information, but it is like a lot of no getting to know um, all these different bacterias. Okay, but for bacteria though, I did um, and and P, but and P two was more of uh, physiology, so it is more of understanding the functions of different things versus my and P one. It was more of knowing each structure. Um, so AMP2 was more function and AMP1 was a lot more anatomy. But for microbiology, um, it was mainly microbiology. I made, now these, this is like a stack of just like, maybe just like one, just a couple chapters. I would make like these type of flashcards and, oh, well that one doesn't have an answer in the back, but like it, when I had time, I would make flashcards like this and I would print out the pictures. Um, of you know E. coli or I can't even see what these pictures are staph coci or E. coli and if you look at the shapes it goes back to um, the first thing that I showed y'all it was the flashcard on my wall of the different shapes of the bacteria and it just really helped me recognize everything um, so when I did have if you 
uh, remember of what I showed you at the beginning of the video, I had each shape labeled on the wall, but when, when it was time for me to quiz, um, go to work and I need to like study um, for like 15 minutes when it was like slow, I would, you know, quiz myself and I would draw these and then I would, like I said, I would quiz myself when I had the chance. Um, these are what my flashcards looked like and these always made me get an 100 on quizzes. Like, although it's good to memorize everything, it's also good to understand what you're learning. So please don't forget that. Um, but if you guys do flashcards like this, like you'll get an 100. Um, I could make a video about how I did my how I did my flashcards um, in another video, but my flashcards really go into depth about everything. Also, for your anatomy book, now I use the. Um, A&P, uh, I'm pretty sure we all like required to have like this certain anatomy and physiology book, but if your professor uses my lab, I highly, highly, highly also recommend using that. They have this little study module um, that every person misses and it's like on the top right corner. And um, when you click on that, they like quiz you within that chapter and it has like every single information that you need to know. Um, it just reviews like everything. They have flashcards, they have, um, you know, when you, if you're an AMP2 and you dissect a pig, they have um, little lab sections where you could look at the intestines of a pig um, and different sorts of stuff. It's a really good studying.